I have been with my now wife for 6.5 years, and we have been married for about three months. I love everything about her and have literally no complaints with our relationship. She has a bunch of tattoos, around 20, which I have always said I like. The particular tattoo I am talking about, she got about two, maybe 2.5 years ago. And it has always kind of bothered me, but I have never really brought it up to her. And I am debating if it is even worth discussing at this point. My wife got this tattoo while visiting with her two married friends in another state. I was unable to go on the trip because I just started a new job and couldn't take time off. I've hung out with the couple only a few times before they moved away to another state. So I don't know them very well, but I was never really a fan of the guy. He came off as very arrogant and is kind of disrespectful to his wife. Also, come to find out after hanging out with them multiple times, the guy is my wife's previous ex-boyfriend's cousin. She broke up with him about six months before meeting me. My wife and her ex used to hang out a lot together with this couple. Not really a big deal. She never interacts with her ex, and her ex never hangs around with this guy when my wife is there. I did find it annoying that she waited multiple years in our relationship to tell me this, though. Again, not the end of the world, but I do find it annoying. So my wife is on this trip to visit them and texts me a picture of the three of them with matching tattoos. They all got the same thing in different places. Hers is on her hip and is only visible in underwear or a bikini. I had been texting her all day and we had been talking about what they've been up to. And there was never any mention of getting tattoos until they already had them. I don't have any tattoos myself, but I feel like that's worth mentioning if you were planning on getting matching tattoos with people. But maybe I'm wrong. At this point, I just thought it was kind of weird that she didn't tell me. And I also personally found it kind of strange to have a tattoo with another married couple. I guess I don't know if there's anything really wrong with it morally, but it's definitely not something I would do. To me, it's weird to match with a couple like that, but people have different relationships. Fast forward another year, and she is on another trip to visit the same couple. Once again, I just started paramedic school, and the schedule is extremely demanding, and there's no way to take time off for vacation, so she goes alone. When she comes back, we're talking about the trip, and she mentions how the guy was talking a bunch of mean stuff about me one night while they were all drinking. I don't know him very well, and he doesn't know me very well, but he obviously had a big problem with me. They were in a group of people with some other friends and he was saying, I'm a jerk and I don't treat her right and I'm not the right guy for her. There was more that he said, but this conversation with my wife was over a year ago and I don't remember all the details. My wife said she told him he's wrong, but they still continued to hang out in the group the rest of the night. I didn't really know what to say about it at the time and figured he lives in a different state. He's shown that he's a jerk and I won't have to see him again, so just forget about it. A couple of weeks ago, the couple was back in town for a funeral for the wife's father. So I went with my wife to support her because she is a nice person. I was forced to hang out with this couple and my wife and everyone acted like he never said these things about me. I was cordial because it was a funeral and I didn't want to cause a scene, but I was pretty upset on the inside. Again, for some reason, I didn't bring it up to my wife that night that I was upset. Everyone went out to the bar after and she was pretty drunk. So I didn't think it was the best time to bring it up but in hindsight, I was a bit distant from my wife the rest of the night, and she picked up on it. Now, whenever I see her tattoo, it really bothers me that she has a permanent matching artwork on her body with another man that is totally okay with openly talking stuff about me to her. Am I overreacting to this? And is it even worth bringing up to my wife at this point now that it's been years since getting the tattoo? Now, for a few comments before the update, Comment one, I don't see an issue with the tattoo at all. Friends get matching tattoos casually if they're all people who like tattoos. This seems completely normal. I don't see an issue with her not mentioning the vague connection to the ex, given that it doesn't result in your wife and her ex ever seeing each other. It sounds like she responded exactly right when the guy said bad things about you by telling him he's wrong then and there. Expecting her to walk away from an entire group night out because one guy was in jerk would be odd. It would also have been odd to revisit the issue again later at a funeral. If anything seems concerning here at all, it's that your wife even bothered to tell you someone said some 
stupid shoot about you that she dealt with at the time. But given that you seem to be upset your wife didn't tell you every detail about this guy previously, I can see why she would. As another commenter posted, the recurring problem in this story is you not communicating your feelings. That's the thing to work on. Your feelings about your wife's tattoo are your own to deal with, but you can improve your communication so new issues that come up in the future don't blow up like this from being kept quiet for so long. Comment two. This comment section is 80% people who don't have tattoos, don't have friends with tattoos, and are dead wrong about who gets matching ones. It's friends, not romantic couples, by a mile. And it's delusional to think a matching tattoo with friends means anything, especially given that they got it before he shoot. Talk to you that one time. Stay on topic. Tell your wife it bums you out that she's still this level of friends with a dude who shoot talked to you once. Don't catastrophize like everyone in this excessively dramatic comments section is doing. Now, for the update. Thanks for sticking around for the update. So, things have been pretty tense since the funeral. My wife noticed I was off and she finally cornered me about it. I spilled everything. How the tattoo bugs me. How her ex's cousin disrespected me. All of it. She was quiet for a long time. Then she said she had something to tell me. Turns out, the tattoo wasn't just a spontaneous thing. She admitted that it was her idea, a way to feel connected to her past. But she didn't think it would be a big deal. She said she was sorry for not telling me sooner. I was floored. It felt like a punch to the gut. I thought I knew her, but this? It was like she was a stranger for a moment. We tried to move past it, but it was like a crack in a windshield spreading slowly. Then, her phone started buzzing more than usual. She was secretive, angling the screen away from me. I tried to ignore it, but the nagging feeling wouldn't go away. One night, her phone went off while she was in the shower. I know, I know. I shouldn't have, but I looked. It was a message from him, her ex's cousin. Something about missing the good old days. I felt sick. I confronted her when she got out, and she said they were just friends, that he was going through a tough time with his wife. I wanted to believe her, but something didn't sit right. A few days later, she said she needed to go back to their state to help out. I was stuck with a big project at work, so I couldn't go. She left, and I was a mess. I couldn't focus, couldn't eat. I felt like I was losing her. Then, the news dropped. A buddy of mine, who's a bit of a tech whiz, offered to dig around. I know, massive invasion of privacy, but I was desperate. He found out that she wasn't just visiting to help. She was meeting up with him, her ex's cousin. They'd been talking for months. She came back, and I was ready to confront her. But before I could, she told me she was pregnant. I was over the moon. We'd been trying for a while, and this was it, our little miracle. All my doubts, all my fears, they vanished. I hugged her, told her everything would be okay, that we'd figure it out together. But then, my buddy sent me proof. Photos of her with him, looking way too close. I was torn. I had this evidence, but she was carrying our child. I decided to bury it, to pretend I never saw it. I chose to trust her, to believe in our future as a family. Now I'm sitting here, wondering if I made the right call. I love her and I want this family, but there's this voice in the back of my head asking, what if? I guess only time will tell. Thanks for reading. My boyfriend ignored my medical emergency and eyes my inheritance. So I kicked him out and showed him who's boss by changing the locks and leaving his belongings on the curb. I've been with my boyfriend for a year and a half. I was widowed in my very early 20s, and my whole family was heavily traumatized as we tried to navigate my grief. But it connected us, and I'm very close with both of my parents now. They are also my neighbors. My boyfriend never had an adult relationship before me. He said he focused on finishing school and establishing himself in a career before looking, which I found admirable. However, he lived with his extremely religious parents until about half a year ago, and has put me through a lot with his growing pains. Over time, this has manifested as me slightly detaching because I can only take so much of getting yelled at over random things and unnecessary boundary pushing 
I find myself having to convince him instead of him immediately trying to understand when I say he has hurt my feelings more often than not. But we don't fight very much, and I do feel he gets better every time. Today my dad sat me down and had a shocking talk with me. He told me financially I would never have to work again if I didn't want to, and I invested properly. I became very wealthy from the way my husband died, and because I'm already chronically ill, I should have someone who accepts that later in life I may need extra help. I own my home and vehicle, plus a ton of land, and my parents are in the same boat. He said he was, of course, leaving their property to me, and my grandpa had said he had also put me as his heir. He went on to tell me that he's frustrated because he feels I'm not as happy as I should be, and he had been debating on how to say it for a long time. He went on to say that the way I speak about my boyfriend is concerning, and he feels my boyfriend is always going to prioritize his parents. He says my boyfriend has thrown up some red flags in multiple conversations, and despite not being religious, my dad gets the vibe that he still has a lot of misogynistic feelings toward women's place in the world. I could see it too, as my boyfriend's mom works full time and does 100% of cleaning and chores. When I'm over, his dad always says something mean to her, and I get uncomfortable. Plus, his dad dislikes me because I'm a widow, and my boyfriend has never defended me on this. He ended it by saying he knows that I'm an adult and he trusts whatever decision I make, but he sees no spark between us, and it makes him sad that I'm not with someone who makes me shine the way my late husband did. He also said he's concerned that when I inherit all these properties, my boyfriend will not respect my choices and try to push me toward what benefits him, or even worse. He asked if I felt my boyfriend would 100% stick by my side when I'm older, and how he would navigate my health when he has previously not shown up in a huge emergency because it was Father's Day and he couldn't let his dad down. I didn't know what to say, and he said I didn't have to give him any answer at all. He just wanted to chat with me and throw out his perspective. I appreciate it, and I think he made a lot of fair points, but I have no idea how to navigate this conversation with my boyfriend now. Maybe we don't even need to have one, and I need to continue observing. If we talk about it, how would I word this to be less negative? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, your dad has the gift of both knowing and observing you your whole life and being able to be an outsider witnessing your relationship. Listen to him. Why do you have to have a polite discussion with your boyfriend when he is incapable of doing you the same courtesy? He yells instead. If I were you, I'd get mad instead of polite and send him back to his parents. He's not a keeper. Comment two, over time, this has manifested as me slightly detaching because I can only take so much getting yelled at over random things and unnecessary boundary pushing. One, do not date someone who yells at you. That is pretty much never okay and is a sign of a very unhealthy relationship and you haven't even hit the hard parts yet. Two, find a man like your dad. You won the lottery with him. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for the latest. So, my dad's talk really got to me, and I've been mulling over everything he said. I didn't bring it up with my boyfriend right away, but life has a funny way of forcing your hand sometimes. Just a few days after that conversation, my boyfriend did something that really got under my skin. He invited his parents over to my place without asking me first. It was like he forgot the boundaries we'd set. His dad, as usual, had some snide remarks about my late husband's pictures still being up. I bit my tongue, but it felt like I was being walked over in my own house. Then, the next day, my boyfriend dropped a news. He said he wanted to start a business and he had the perfect plan. The catch? He wanted to use my land to do it. Said it would be our future, but the way he talked about it, it was clear he hadn't considered what I wanted. It was all about him and his vision. I tried to be diplomatic, told him we needed to discuss it more, but he brushed me off, saying I was just afraid of change. That stung. I felt like I was screaming inside, but on the outside, I just nodded along. It was like I was watching myself from the outside, too passive, too accommodating. The aftermath was a mess. My parents were livid when they found out. They saw it as him trying to take advantage of me. 
I couldn't even argue with them because part of me agreed. It was like the more I gave in, the more he took. But then, as if things couldn't get more complicated, my health took a turn for the worse. I had a bad episode and I needed support. My boyfriend was nowhere to be found. Said he had a meeting with potential investors for his business idea and couldn't miss it. My parents stepped in as they always do. And it was in that moment, lying in a hospital bed, that I realized how alone I felt in my relationship. I was still reeling from that when my grandpa passed away. It was sudden and shook the whole family. At the funeral, my boyfriend was there, but he might as well not have been. He was distant, more concerned with his phone than with me. And when the will was read and I was confirmed as the heir, his attitude shifted. He was suddenly attentive, asking about the properties, the assets. It was transparent, and it was the last straw. I made a decision then, one that would change everything. I told him we needed to talk. I laid it all out, how I felt, what I needed from a partner. He didn't take it well, accused me of being influenced by my family, of not seeing his potential. But I stood my ground. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I told him it was over. The fallout was intense. He didn't go quietly. There were arguments, tears, and a side of him I'd never seen before. But I had my family, and for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was taking control of my life again. So that's where I'm at now. Single, a bit scared, but feeling more like myself than I have in months. It's not the end of the world, just the end of a chapter. Thanks for reading. Thank my girlfriend hired over $100,000 in debt from me and tried to drag me down with her so I cut her off and watched as her financial house of cards collapsed. My girlfriend, a 34-year-old female, of six months just recently revealed to me, 37-year-old male, that she was over $100,000 back taxes, student loans, personal loans, credit card debt, in debt when I confronted her about her finances. The confrontation came after I started adding up the signs that I saw during our first six months. Moving to my very expensive city without a job, taking out a $10,000 personal loan, struggling to make income with her new career transition, using a new credit card, because the other one was maxed out applying for unemployment, using EBT for groceries, being denied for an $800 line of credit to pay for a snowboard season pass and told her, I don't think she should go to a music festival coming up with me and all our friends, as she should use the money for the $300 ticket price to pay her debt rent. She told me she already made plans to go and didn't want to let down her friends. Now I told her that her not making money at the moment isn't a problem, but the fact that she continues to live like she is, is the red flag. During the first six months, we went on trips, concerts, expensive dinners, nights out and her lack of money or the fact that she went into more debt for this never came up. All these things were definitely not split 50-50. I paid for flights, drinks, and dinners here and there. And to her credit, she tried to pay for things here and there. However, she also went out to dinner and drinks with her friends a lot during this time. So I did not see much of a lifestyle change on her end due to her hardship. She told me she used to have her own small business, she did, and made close to $250,000 a year and was used to living a great lifestyle. Me personally, I make a high income and I definitely have a good lifestyle, but I do still live below my means and save, invest 20, 30% of my income a month. I don't have any debt. I worked diligently to pay off all my debt and I remember the feeling of dread and lack of freedom. I felt when I did have $40,000 in student loans, credit card debt and medical debt. Honestly, it gives me anxiety just typing this and thinking about her debt. She is starting to make more income with little jobs she has here and there. And we have agreed to get her some more financial education and talk to a debt counselor. I have already told her I won't marry her with that debt. The issue with me personally is that I want to personally keep living my lifestyle and not have to worry about her finances. I will pay for some things and we need to discuss what, but I do not want to pay for everything. She wants to be my equal financially to her credit, but she can't afford to. And when she is paying for things, I can't help but think that the money she is putting into doing these activities with me should go towards her paying off her debt. I know she is just trying to keep up, but I can't in good conscience accept her putting herself into more debt. It goes against all my values. 
While some of her debt was unavoidable, student loans, some taxes, I feel like she flippantly took on more debt without really thinking of the future consequences. There is a lot to navigate for a young relationship. I fear that even if she gets a job with a decent income and starts paying off her debt, there will still be an imbalance financially there where I will have to sacrifice my lifestyle to not put her in more debt. It will take a long time for her to pay it off and I struggle to see how we can build a life together, house and kids, if she has to go into bankruptcy or get her wages garnished or just gets even more debt. I want kids soon in three years and now I wonder if we can even afford them. It has me really anxious for a couple of weeks and we still haven't resolved it. She was vulnerable enough to show me her finances and the hole she is in, and I don't want to punish her for it by ending it, but I really don't feel comfortable continuing with her. I am flip-flopping between ending it and helping her. I feel like I have to drastically change my lifestyle to be in this relationship. Am I freaking out too soon? Should I give her some time to figure it out with my support? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Why are you thinking about kids, not to mention future expenses, with someone you just started dating a few months ago? The whole point of dating is to find out if you're compatible, and now you've learned that you're not. You have very different approaches to expenses, money, and lifestyle. So end it. You're not punishing her over money. You're sparing her and yourself the heartbreak of postponing the inevitable. Comment two. She's bad with money and you can't do anything about that. And it's next level irresponsible that she can't see that. I understand that you care about her, but she's going to affect your financial stability if you try and bail her out. Best you can do is let her go. And if she figures herself out in a few years, then good for her. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. Things have escalated since my last post. Just when I thought we could work through her financial mess, my girlfriend dropped the news. Turns out, she had been hiding more than just debt. She confessed that she had been married before, and her ex-husband was actually responsible for a chunk of her debt. She said it was from a joint business venture that went south, and she was too ashamed to tell me. I was floored. Trust is everything, and here she was, keeping secrets about her past. The revelation came after I noticed some inconsistencies in her stories. I did some digging, found an old wedding photo on social media, and confronted her. She broke down, admitting everything. The deceit stung more than the debt itself. I felt like a fool, having opened up my life to someone who wasn't being honest with me. Her ex was still in the picture, too. He had been calling her, asking for money, and she had been sending him what little she could scrape together. It was a mess. She was still entangled with him, financially and emotionally, and I was caught in the middle of it all. I had to take a step back and reassess everything. I had been supportive, but this was too much. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being used as a safety net while she sorted out her past mistakes. It was a tough pill to swallow, realizing that the person I cared for was capable of such deception. In the midst of all this, she lost her job. The small gig she had been relying on dried up, and she was back to square one. I watched as she struggled to find work, her debt looming over her like a dark cloud. I wanted to help, but I also needed to protect myself. I couldn't let her financial chaos drag me down too. The final straw came when she asked me to co-sign a loan for her. She said it was to consolidate her debt, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't tie my financial future to someone who had already proven to be irresponsible with money. It was a hard conversation, but I told her no. She was upset accusing me of not being there for her when she needed me the most. After that, things between us grew tense. We were both walking on eggshells, trying to navigate the strained atmosphere. I felt trapped, torn between my desire to help her and my need to protect my own interests. Then, she did something I never expected. She took out another loan behind my back, using the address of our shared apartment. When the collection notices started arriving, I was livid. She had crossed a line, bringing her financial troubles directly to my doorstep. I realized then that I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't be with someone who was so reckless with their life and by extension with mine. I had to cut her off for my own sanity. It was the hardest decision I've ever made, but I knew it was the right one. We had a long, painful talk. 
and I told her it was over. She pleaded with me, promising to change, but the trust was broken. I helped her find a new place to live and moved her things out. It was over. Now I'm trying to move on to rebuild the sense of security that was shattered by her secrets and lies. I'm focusing on my own life, my finances, and my future. It's not easy, but I know it's what I need to do. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.